It is trade deadline day across Major League Baseball, which is fun from a real baseball perspective because we could see some really interesting names get moved, and that's always a delight. It's a lot of fun to fantasize about that kind of stuff. From a DFS perspective, it makes us remain on our toes. Now, the trade deadline is before lock for tonight, whereas it was after lock last night, so it does help things a bit, but it means... Until 6 o'clock, we're not going to know officially what lineups will look like. We're not going to know. We, some starting pitchers may change. So you got to be on your toes for today. Make sure you are adjusting for the latest news, altering lineups, bumping pitchers up or down based on opposing lineups, stuff like that. So I'm going to tell you what where things stand as of right now this morning. But just be aware. Check up on news later on today. Dig back in. Make sure things haven't changed too much. You can always ask me on Twitter about it, but it could be a fun day for some MLB DFS. So let's dive on in and get you set for this Tuesday night slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Tuesday night's 13-game main slate. But locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Once again, the trade deadline, I believe it's at 6 o'clock for tonight. So we're going to know final stuff. Uh, you know, they can they have that rule where they can be on the phone to like 6.15. So we'll have about 45 minutes for sure. But I'd probably try to be around in that time in case things do change dramatically, whether it be from a matchup perspective or something else. So if you can, I'd try to be around between 6.15 and 7.05 p.m. tonight in case things change due to the trade deadline. Only weather note for today in Chicago for the White Sox and the Royals. The winds are in from center at 10 miles per hour. That's a downgrade for bats there. Um, the wind did not help them last night when, uh, you know, they were uh, when it was blowing out. But still, it's not as big as Wrigley, but does still matter. Winds in from center at, at Chicago. So downgrade White Sox and Royals hitters as a result of that. We'll break down pitchers, stacks, things to watch, and much more in just one second. But first, a reminder to check out the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up later on today, we've got our PGA DFS podcast via myself and Brandon Gadula for the Wyndham Championship. That'll be going up on the FanDuel YouTube page live at 10 a.m. and also on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed after that. Go subscribe uh, for PGA, UFC, NASCAR, and eventually NFL back around the corner as well, all in the same place. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. This season, turn K's into cash and big hits into big wins with FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. With great promotions every day, a safe and secure app, and the ability to get paid fast, there is no better place to bet America's pastime than on, on America's number one sportsbook. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and sign up today to get started with your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. Corbin Burns is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel checking in at 11-3, but he is not the headliner because we got Jacob DeGrom back in our lives for tonight. He checks in at 10,900, not in play for DFS yet. We'll talk about that later on, but fun to have him back in our lives regardless. Kevin Gosman is 10-3, a Tristan McKenzie at 10-1. Christian Javier's salary is 97 with Logan Gilbert at 95, Zach Gallon 93, and Tyler Anderson 9,000. We have Adam Wainwright, Spencer Strider, Jameson Thomas. Own, Brad Keller and Cole Irvin as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, it is a similarly tough slate to last night where we got a lot of guys who could potentially wind up being the top option. But this time, unlike last night, I'm going to go with the more obvious name. When John Gray last night, he got hurt, didn't go well. This time, we'll go the easy route and go with Corbin Burns as my top pitcher of the night. The matchup here definitely helps. Burns is facing the Pirates with an 83 WRC plus against righties. They have a 36% fly ball rate and a 24% strikeout rate. That is a great matchup for Burns. And 
He brings plenty of heat all by himself without the matchup. For the full season, Burns sets a 2.73 skill interactive ERA with a 33% strikeout rate and a 35% hard hit rate. So he's great. And he's especially been good recently from a strikeout perspective. Burns has double digit strikeouts in three of the past four starts and in four of his past seven. He had nine in one of the others as well. He has let up some runs in that time, but I'm not going to sweat it too much. Uh, one of those rougher outings is a tough matchup. This one is not that. ERA 2.31 for Burns overall this year. I don't think we have to spend too much time on this. He's great. The matchup is great. He's projected for a slate high 8.3 strikeout. So I'm down to just lock him in and put Corbin Burns at the top of my list for tonight. The second name for me tonight is going to be Christian Javier by a hair over Spencer Strider. And it is a bit nitpicky to go with Javier, but it's because Strider is making his second consecutive start against the Phillies. So I don't mind that matchup. I just don't like familiarity. It's enough for me to put Javier second on my list. That's the main downside I have with Strider. We'll talk about him later on. But Javier is also worthy of this slot, independent of the repeat matchup for Strider. We've seen Javier go nuts recently. He has 10 plus strikeouts, uh, or he's had three plus strike or 10 plus strikeouts three times in a four start stretch. He has cooled off a bit since then, but nothing too concerning in the pitch mix, nothing too concerning with the velocity. So we can just look at the bigger sample. And in 13 starts for Javier, since he joined this rotation full time, he has a 3.23 skill interactive ER rate despite a massive fly ball rate. And he gets down that low because his strikeout rate's 34%. That's the second best mark on the slate behind just Spencer Strider. He's also letting up a 34% hard hit rate. So you combine a lot of strikeouts, the low hard hit rate, and that's why you can live despite being so fly ball dependent. Javier's facing the Red Sox tonight. It's a really beat up offense. A lot of key pieces missing. They have a 95 WRC plus against righties in their current active roster with a 35% fly ball rate and minimal walks. Javier has also struggled with walks. So it does help to get him against a, a lower walk team, but he's at home. In a good but not great matchup. It's not a repeat matchup. I think that's enough to give Javier the number two slot slightly ahead of Spencer Strider uh, behind Corbin Burns for tonight's slate. Now, the fun thing for this slate is that with Strider's salary just tonight, $8,300, I get to talk about him too. So we can have our top three pitchers be our top three guys and feel pretty good about it. Strider's facing the Phillies here. Like I mentioned, a 93 WRC plus against righties with a 23% strikeout rate. It is a good matchup with no Bryce Harper in the mix. Strider can shove against that. Now, again, it's a repeat matchup, and that stinks, but he was really good in that one start. He went six innings, allowed one run on three hits. That game was on the road. He now moves home. So that does help offset a bit. It's still not perfect, but Strider's really good. We have 10 starts on him since Strider got fully stretched out, and that's a pretty big sample for a pitcher. But his skill interactive ERA is 2.65 with a 36% strikeout rate. And his bad at ball numbers aren't that bad either. So yeah, the repeat matchup thing stinks for sure. And even with the discount, I'm okay putting Javier above Strider for tonight. But Strider's really good, especially relative to salary. So I'm going to use him despite my qualms about this matchup. So to me, it goes... Burns one, Javier two, Strider three, accounting for matchup, accounting for salary, all that stuff. I'm going to rank them in that order for tonight and feel pretty good about the upside within all three of those guys. Let's move now to stacks. And it is a big night for the Mets. Mentioned before, Jacob deGrom coming off the IL. That's very exciting. But it's the offense we're going to talk about here from a DFS perspective once again. We'll get to deGrom and things to watch. The Nationals are starting Corey Abbott. And Abbott has struggled. Uh, in AAA, he's been with the organization for the Nats for about a, a few months now. In AAA, 4.92 XFIP with a 5.08 ERA. He was getting some strikeouts there with a 26% mark, but he walked a lot of guys, let up a lot of fly balls, and that's not a great combination. That's especially true if you expect the strikeout rate to slip a bit against a higher level of competition, which is what I would expect personally because the big leagues are tough. Big league hitters are very good. So... Abbott lets up a lot of fly balls, lets up a lot of walks, not enough strikeouts to overcome it, and you put all that in a hot, hitter-friendly park against an offense with a 121 WRC plus versus righties. I think we have to be super high on the Mets here. So no issues with them on my end. I think that they are a very good option for today. 
And I think the Mets deserve to be our top stack of the main slate. I talked last week about the value of Dan Vogelbach in this offense. I also think that logic applies to Tyler Naquin if he plays. He might not. I'm not really sure. Uh, he's hit sixth against the past two righties they faced since he joined this team. So I'm assuming he's going to play and probably hit a decent spot in the order. Naquin has a 213 ISO versus righties with a 44% fly ball rate. He can swipe some bags as well. He's in a much better offense now than he was before. So it's a big upgrade for him. I think both he and Vogelbach are pretty fun on their their new team. Uh, Vogelbach, salary for tonight, 28. Naquin, 27. I think that's all super advantageous. And they're higher power options than the other non-studs within this Mets lineup. So Naquin and Vogelbach, both guys I'll be in on for tonight. I was on the Rangers last night. Didn't go well beyond just John Gray leaving with the injury. The offense also didn't do a whole lot, but... I think I want to be on them again tonight. They're facing Jordan Lyles, who's had some ups and downs this year, and he's currently in one of the downs, at least from a peripheral perspective. He's been shifting to using more forcing fastballs and fewer sinkers in his past eight starts, and that shift has hurt his advanced numbers. He has a 4.76 skill interactive ERA with an 18% strikeout rate and a lot of fly balls too. It hasn't hurt him too much because his ERA in the time is 3.72, and that's even with... A start against the Yankees in there. He let up just three runs and five innings in that one. But he has had some softer matchups too. And he wasn't like shutting people down. We saw him let up six earned runs to the Rays, let up four earned runs to the White Sox. And he's got some issues under the hood too. So it's not just the looking at the results here. It's more so the peripherals that draw me in. And there have been enough results to make me think that the peripherals not too fluky. So... I think there's enough here for us to justify stacking the Rangers again tonight, despite how last night went in that regard. I do want to bump up the lefties when I'm doing this. They have a 520 slugging percentage against him this year against Lyles, whereas righties are at 402. So good thing for Corey Seager. Came in last night, had a home run, uh, coming off that injury. So that's a good thing. It also helps the switch hitters here. I'm not going to bump down Adelise Garcia and Marcus Semien because they're very good players, more so Garcia than Semien right now, but it does help aid the lefties for sure. So Seager among that the big three here, Seager will be number one for me for tonight because of Lyle's platoon splits. The third stack tonight is going to be the Twins. They're facing Matt Manning, and Manning's making his first start off the 60-day IL. has been out for a long time, and he did look good both earlier this year in the big leagues and in his AAA rehab start. So this is not a slam dunk. But the larger sample on Manning is a bit underwhelming. He made 18 starts last year. He had a 5.27 skill interactive ERA with a 42% hard hit rate allowed. You could potentially throw out that sample if his first two starts this year were wildly, wildly different. And the velocity was up on the fastball for Manning and the curveball this year as well. It was down on his slider, which likely means he probably changed his slider, which is a good thing. So it's possible that the 2022 Matt Manning is a much better version of Matt Manning than the 2021 version. But it's a tough assignment here. The Twins offense has a 119 WRC plus against righties. Uh, they have a 177 ISO. That does go down if Byron Buxton can't go once again. And it also does hurt that Alex Kirilov is banged up because he was uh, a guy I was using a lot before that. But there are still enough guys here we can feel good about to stack the Twins. And I will do that here tonight. I just have less conviction in doing so because of the improvement Manning has shown in a small sample in the big leagues and in his AAA rehab starts. I'm going to keep on talking to Jose Miranda here. He is ISO against righties up to 161 for the full season, but it's a 204 since he came back up from AAA. He has a 39% fly ball rate. His salary is still $2,700, so totally fine by me. I Again, I prefer if Buxton can play because he aids everyone in this lineup, but I think they've got enough guys here to feel good about sacking even if he can't go. Correa, Polanco, um, Miranda as well. I think there's enough there to feel okay about them, even if we don't get uh, Bucks and Kepler's out too. I still think the Twins would be in play for stacking either way. Let's go now to things to watch and talk about Jacob DeGrom because we get to actually watch him pitch tonight, so which is a delight. I'm expecting around 80 or so pitches for DeGrom. He went 67 in his final rehab start, and they've been working him up slowly. So probably going to be 80 and then 90, then 95 or so. I'd expect the progression to be. Should be back on the DFS radar pretty soon because 90 pitches from DeGrom can be worth quite a bit, but 
I'm just happy to get to to watch him for the time being because that's always a fun thing. So uh, DeGrom, not on my radar for DFS, but on the radar from a baseball fan perspective for tonight. Spencer Howard's been doing a good job of suppressing hard contact since he came back up for the Rangers. He's let up a 31% hard hit rate. Other stuff is pretty concerning. I think he could have some issues as the sample gets larger. Based on the Orioles tonight, I think they're fine for stacking. They're not in my top three, but I think that they are okay. Finally, the Phillies are using a bullpen game tonight. Their bullpen is not one we need to fear. They're facing the Braves, and I think we can stack against that for sure. The one error might be not ranking the Braves higher. So if anything with the Braves, maybe bump them up above the Twins. Uh, you know, somewhere and they could even be as high as second. Maybe I'm just too low. I probably will reevaluate. So ask me again later, but I think probably too low on the Braves, a little bit lower on them than I am on the, I think for right now, the twins and the the Rangers, but, and I wouldn't put them above the Mets in the top spot, but the Braves could be as high as two. I would say no lower than four in terms of stacking for tonight against that bullpen game for the Phillies. Let's finish up here some dinger calls. The boring one is not as boring as usual. I'm going to go Dan Vogelbach. Um, I just enjoy Dan Vogelbach aesthetically a lot um, and from a baseball perspective. So we'll go Vogelbach here. Basing off of that, but I think that that's a good spot for Vogelbach. A lot of power versus righties. Better park tonight, too, down in Washington. So we'll go Dan Vogelbach as the boring one. The fun one is Leody Tavares uh, because... Or Tavares, I should say. He's not really, like, regarded for his power. He's more so, like, a guy who gets buzz because of his speed, but he had a 191 ISO in AAA this year in the big leagues across 137 plate appearances. He has a 42% hard hit rate with a 40% fly ball rate. He's not like barreling up a whole lot, but he does put it in the air. I don't mind that. So I think for a fun one, this works. So the home run calls for today, Dan Vogelbach and Leody Tavares, or Tavares, and we'll see how those go for tonight. Again, though, make sure you are on your toes because things can change throughout the day. Matchups may get... Better from a pitching perspective, we may get totally different starting pitchers for tonight, too. So make sure you check back later on and make sure things did not change too dramatically at the trade deadline to alter things from a DFS perspective. That is all that we have here for today. Again, our PGA DFS podcast coming up later on. It's on at 10 o'clock on the FanDuel YouTube page and up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed right after that. So search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your DFS lineups. Enjoy the trade deadline. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.